Hello, everybody. My name is Lise. Welcome, everybody, to my review of The Bastard's Executioner. Now, The Bastard's Executioner is loosely based on an actual Welsh revolt that lasted one year in actual history. Uh, this is during the time of, like, Edward uh, Longshanks. This is basically during, like, Braveheart uh, era. This is right at the same time period. So the fact is that we get a TV show that is based on an actual revolt that lasted less than a, one year. I'm going to take it as a win. I'm going to take it as a win for history, and I take it as like, okay, I commend efforts when it's a, a base historical, base a TV show off a historical drama that lasts for one year of all wars. So I would say that's a plus for me right there. Now, another thing, what the show's about. There's a man named Wilkin who worked in the English army. He's now a farmer. In the first two episodes, his entire life is shattered. His pregnant wife is killed off. His unborn child is dead. And in doing so, he seeks revenge about the people who uh, did the deed. Who killed his uh, killed his wife, killed his unborn daughter, and has, uh, laid, laid waste to his village. So him and his friends decide to exact revenge. And in doing so, when they get the revenge, they decide to disguise of who they are. The man named Wilkin decides to become... Uh, tied, uh, after he killed this one dude who was an executioner, he decides to take that man's life, his role. And doing so unknowingly, he gets that dead man's executioner's freaking crazy ass wife, a little baby, and like a five year old kid. And he has to work with the scheme in order to be a part of their lives. And they accept him for that because one, the lady's crazy. She's like, "Yes, this is my husband." The son knows that that ain't, the, uh, that ain't his actual father, but the fact that his father was a piece of shit, he's like, "I'd rather have you as a father." And Wilkin is infiltrated into the shire of the Welsh and he works for a uh, uh basically he works for a chamberlain and he works for Lady Love. He works in this community, this new castle, and he has to now perform executions, torture, all the stuff what executioner must do. He must provide for uh, this entire dang uh, community. So he has to not only change who he was, he has to do new new terrible evil things in order to uh, make sure he lives. And it's a quite interesting show. I'm not going to lie. The first two episodes was not overall my favorite. But the show got consistently better. This show is made by Kurt Sutler I believe. And if you don't know who Kurt Sutler is. He's the guy who made. Uh, Sons of Anarchy. Mines MC. And the thing is though. You could tell it's him. Because he has the same type of approach he had with Sons of Anarchy. He does with the Medieval show. And some of the times it just doesn't work. Like, you could tell that this was definitely made by the Sons of Anarchy Press. You just see the rhymes in a row. I don't know how to describe it, but when you see the first episode, you immediately start thinking, this has some Sons of Anarchy vibes, and it really does. And this, how they do the cuts, how they use the camera, it's very, very much what the creator of Sons of Anarchy did. In the show, we have a second plot line, which deals with uh, Kurt Sutler, a guy who played Otto, wife's, uh, his wife, Katie Seagal, who basically was Gemma in Sons of Anarchy. She's in this show, and she's a witch who helps Wilkin in his raid as the executioner. In doing so, also, there's a supernatural feel to her and how she has a religious cult. Uh, has, she has religious members going against her, and they're trying to take her out. And we have that certain storyline with her as a witch. Didn't mind it. The fifth storyline, I'm going to be honest with you, is the best storyline. I don't care. This is, this is a problem if I have it with the show. Wilkin Executioner, being a charade executioner, is not the most interesting character. His story is not the most interesting. It's interesting, but I like the character of Lady Love. Lady Love and Will and the Chamberlain, she lost her husband in the first two episodes. She must convince the king to not separate her, uh, her like her shire, her, uh, her, uh, her as the baron. She has to remain a baroness in order to control the community and control the population. And I love her backward schemes. I like, well, not even schemes. She's just doing whatever she needs to to survive the English throne. She has to deal with the English, uh, the English king's freaking asshole of a commissioner, asshole of maybe a possible lover. And she has to use whatever means she has in her disposal in order to make sure her shire, her lordship is intact. Her... 
uh, her and Wilkin, their relationship is so rushed. But I do like them as characters. And I do like Lady Love as a character. I like uh, the Chamberlain. The guy who plays from freaking True Blood is in this show. Uh, Bill. And now he's in this show. He's trying to manipulate the plot lines. There's a lot of back scheming. And he has, he's a very interesting character. Well, I like when him and Lady Love work together in order to keep their shire intact and to make sure Lady Love stays in charge. There's a lot of great things about this show that are very well done. But when you really look at it, when you have like three storylines where you deal with Kate Seagal as the witch and how she, uh, religious people are after her. Wilkin, who is uh, being the bastard executioner, who is being the executioner. He's trying to live this double life. I enjoyed, but overall, to me, the best interesting storylines was the Lord of Lady Love, the Baroness, trying to control, trying to keep her ki kingdom intact and not have the King of England invade. Or, like, you know, to, like, take her uh, ownership and everything she's owned. There's a lot of nice intrigue to this show. There's a lot of good st uh, storytelling moments. Some of the action got uh, uh, the action. It's half and half. Some of it's good. Some of it's great. Uh, some of it's just downright terrible. I say the only downside is just like the first two episodes were eh. Then it got better and better and better. And then it went to a, a season finale, which was a series finale. This show only lasted one year. And I gotta be honest, I wouldn't mind a season two. I wouldn't mind a season three. This was not the most terrible show of a medieval, of all the medieval shows I have watched. This reminds me a lot of Camelot. It has potential. It has something to could grow. This ain't Game of Thrones level of acting. This ain't Game of Thrones level of storytelling. Granted, this ain't season 10. But it is a consistently good show. I would give this show, The Best Executioner, a B, B minus. I don't hate this show. I don't love the show. But it left me with enough intrigue to be like, hmm, I kind of want to watch the, I kind of want a second season. Same way I felt about Camelot. Camelot, I want a second season. I want a third season. And for the Baxter Executioner, I kind of wanted a second season. I wanted a third season. Now, will it be as memorable as Game of Thrones? No. But sure did that. But sure didn't. It wasn't the piece of shit show like Nightfall. It didn't. It didn't. It ain't the overly top, historically inaccurate rain. And it's not when it, and it ended better than Game of Thrones. Let me just say that. Even though it was forced to end. Let's just say Game of Thrones season finale ruined Game of Thrones for me in general. But overall, The Bastard's Executioner, I could say I actually enjoyed it. It was a good show. The first two episodes are not that great. The finale was all right. But all things considered, I wasted a lot. I wasted a lot of time on a lot of worse shows. I wasted a lot of time where shows are just downright awful. And why the heck am I even watching? But overall, the Backstreet Executioner was a good time. But that's my personal opinion, everybody. What did you all think? Did you feel like the creator of Sons of Anarchy didn't do a good job with the show? Because I know he did Sons of Anarchy, he did this show, and he did Minds MC. He went back to his roots. Did you think this was a good stepping uh, stone for him? You think he learned a lot? What's your personal opinion overall of the Backstreet Executioner? My name's Jaleesa, and I offered everybody. Bye-bye. Uh,